Here are some ways that I've laid the groundwork to increase my income over the past week. For background, I come from a long line of under earners and specifically under earning women. I took a long time to get really serious about my money, but now that I'm here and I'm paying attention to my income and the money that's coming in, I want to be purposeful in increasing that amount. So here are the things that I have done over the past week. Straight to the point, no rambling. So really there are three main areas that I'm working on in terms of increasing my income and that's laying the internal mind and uh, mindset work. The second way is through increasing the value of my skills in the marketplace and my day job. And the third way is through increasing the value of my business and my own personal um, business ventures. So thing one for internal and laying the mind work and the, the mindset, uh, making sure that my mindset's right. That is really critical because if my mindset isn't right, the money comes in and then the money can just go right out. Or I feel like if my mindset isn't right, I would never really get kind of off the ground. And this has happened to me in the past where I've kind of had these great intentions that I'm going to make more money and I'm going to do this and this and that. And I never get off the ground. So really being purposeful and intentional and making sure that my mind is correct and in the right place for increase and receiving and keeping the money is really important for me to have the right mindset. So these are the things that I'm doing right now. Affirmations. I am listening to them and I am writing them. And I know these things in my head to do. I know that I ought to be listening to money affirmations. I know that I ought to be listening to financial money building content, looking at other people's stories, how they've increased their income, how they've increased their net worth. I know that I ought to be um, listening to affirmations, but I don't always do the right things. So having this accountability is really encouraging me to actually do what I know I need to do. The thing is, I fully believe that I have everything I need inside me. I simply need to do what I know I need to do. So that is thing one is I'm actually listening to the affirmations. I'm writing down these affirmations and I am um, writing out plans and action steps that I'm going to take for increasing the value of my, my skills and my business. So things two and three. So when it comes to affirmations, I literally search YouTube for money affirmations and I listen to them and I, I can tell right away if it's a, a video or a track that resonates with me, I'll keep listening to it over and over again. And I, it will be like random times. Like it'll, it'll be like when I'm making dinner and I'm, or I'm cleaning up or sometimes I did it recently when I was trying to cram at a workout which is something else that I'm doing in order to make sure that my mind and my body are working together and that I have a healthy mind in a healthy body, which is the goal. So affirmations and actually doing what I know I need to do. Affirmations. Number two is actually listening to stories of people who've done that before, because that's super helpful to see how other people's stories have unfolded. It can be a little bit discouraging, especially when I think of these people and I see these people that are so much further ahead than I ever was at their age. It's a little frustrating. That's why I try to kind of take what I can and make it actionable to my situation and realize that everyone is on their own journey in their own timeline. So that's another thing that I'm doing is following other people's path to success. So I can take those nuggets and glean from them. Something else I'm doing to make sure that my mind and internal framework is set up is my uh, meditation and, and exercise practice. So I do uh, yoga, I also do a mat workout, and actually doing those workouts is a huge boost to not only my mental, but my, my physical, but my mental state as well. I find that moving my body is a good way to get myself to a better place in general. So those are the things that I'm doing to get my mindset and my, my internal frame correct. So the next thing that I'm doing is actively increasing the value of my skills in the marketplace. This is a big thing that I have been on for, for a while now. Um, and there are three things under this as well. So the first thing sounds simple, but I was surprised that I wasn't better at this, but it's actually knowing what it is that I do currently. And it's one thing to kind of go through your day-to-day -day jobs, but it's another thing to explain to someone who doesn't know your industry, who doesn't, isn't familiar with the type of, of work that you do when you try to tell them in 30 seconds what it is you do. And they look at you like, yeah, okay. Wait, I don't understand that. And it doesn't make sense. And it doesn't sound like it's very profitable. I'm like, okay. So that's thing one is getting better at actually explaining what it is I do today. 
thing too is writing out exactly what I do. Um, and that's just kind of a good practice in terms of keeping a resume ready. I feel that no matter whether you have the most secure job or you're, you feel like you're going to lose your job tomorrow, I feel like having an up-to-date resume always gives me a sense of security. I just feel like it's a good practice that helps me, again, increase the value of my skills in my current employment and to any potential employer. So really making sure that my current skills are up-to-date is thing two. And thing three is that I've been looking at open positions that are a match for my current qualifications. So this is also helpful to get an idea of the market rate of my skills um, in the marketplace and what they would kind of go for other positions that I might be sort of partially qualified for and to see if there's any what other skills I would want to add to my current qualifications. So for example, last June, I or this June, I took a Power BI course um, open through, let me see if I can get this straight. I took the course through, was it Udemy? I'll try to leave the information down below. It was very accessible. It was free. If in you, I had 30 days open access, but I could pay an additional fee for a certificate. I opted not to do that. I just took a free course and got it done in 30 days. It's a fantastic course. I highly recommend it. Thing is, I work on a Mac and Power BI desktop is only available right now on a PC, so I'd use my work um, PC, which again, I feel like increased the value of my skills for my current employer because it really encouraged me to look at data sets in a different way, which was pretty helpful. I'm, our company uses Tableau, so Tableau and Power BI are kind of two different systems. I, I could also eventually take a Tableau course as well that I feel would increase my current qualifications as well. Power BI was just um, more, I guess, readily available. Um, is why I did that. I'd worked with it before. So that's something that I did to add to my current skills. I am by no, I am nowhere near anywhere near proficiency, but it was good to, again, have that skill in my repertoire, things that I'm at least ha have been exposed to. So that was um, positive. And I will I continue to do that. I can I hop on LinkedIn and just look at, again, positions that I am currently qualified for and what I can add to my current skills in order to make me more valuable in the marketplace and also a better um, a better asset currently in my current role. So the third thing is my business and making my business more profitable. This is something that I am continually working on and the thing is it takes creativity and by the end of the day when I have time to actually sit down I have all next to no mental bandwidth to actually sit down and brainstorm and then execute on ideas. It's it gets frustrating, but there's no better time. So it's not going to get any easier <laughs> right now. So I am being purposeful in doing what's currently making me money, knowing my current revenue drivers, which right now is simply making content, which is the original thing that I started doing and really enjoy and I want to continue doing because I think it's important to have more transparency in the financial space, personal finance. So that is what I am doing now. And just continuing to brainstorm and read about what's working for other people and think, think about how I can make that work for me. It's an ongoing challenge, but it's something I'm committed to because I'm committed to growing my income. So ideally in five years, my dream scenario would be to double my income in my day job and then have the same on my personal business. And I know that can happen. I simply need to take the steps and execute on them. So these are sort of the little things that I'm doing each day and I aim to compound them and to focus on these things. What what you appreciate appreciates and attention. <laughs> what is it? What, what's the saying? Energy goes where attention flows. So I want to be very attentive to increasing my skills and in turn receiving more money. I'm also open to money coming to me in ways that don't require me to do anything too. I believe that I don't necessarily need to work harder in order to receive more money. And that's something that I've just recently learned <laughs> and I'm being okay with. So yeah, it'd be great to work hard and get more money. That's one way you, you can get more money. The other way is just simply being open to receiving more money just simply by being. And I'm also open to that as well. So there you go. That's what I got for you. That's what I've done to increase my income this week. Thanks for watching.